Hello guys, today is Saturday, which should have been another video from my car, but today we have a part two of yesterday's video, so the video from my car will be back next Saturday, and this Saturday we're having a part two reviewing behind the scenes of my new Laravel Daily Com, where in the comments you asked some questions. And yesterday's video was about the thoughts like a project manager and project owner and entrepreneur, and today let's dive into the code, the technical details. So first the code structure, I will show you some of it. So structure is a typical MVC blade type website without any Vue.js or SPA or inertia or anything fancy these days. I'm actually quite surprised that the whole SPA and JavaScript first design thinking took off that wildly. In my experience, you still can create simple websites with blade and add JavaScript or Livewire, or Alpine.js, or whatever you prefer, only for some specific parts where it's actually needed. So this is exactly what Laravel Daily.com is. A lot of blades, so resources, views, pages, blade components, and only for some of the things, there's Livewire. For example, if you're watching the course video, there's a button mark as completed. So to avoid the full page refresh, it does make sense to make it a dynamic component, which would update data in the database, and then you would proceed with other video. So that's one of the few examples where the actual dynamic behavior is needed. So from the architecture part, it's Laravel with some live wire on top. In terms of design and visual look, I was working with a designer and I was happy to work with a designer who is also a front-ender. So I got this result not in a Photoshop file or something like that visually, and not even HTML and CSS. That designer is also a Laravel developer. So he presented his work in this format in blade file with components already. So that was a huge time saver for the whole process. We were able to almost immediately implement the design into the backend and test the features. And the design itself is by the way, based on Tailwind. Next thing I want to emphasize is automated testing. We've covered quite a lot of pages by automated tests, by feature tests. And I have two separate recent courses about testing for those of you who are not testing yet or not fully testing. But in this case, we started testing not with TDD. I'm not a big fan of TDD, of starting with test first, because first you don't really know what you need. As I was mentioning in the part one of this video, I was changing my mind about how some features should work. And we were adding the tests only when some features were pretty much finished or at the final stages. So for example, course show page test, let's see what scenarios we have here. Test that can display published course. Some courses are in progress are not published. Test cannot display draft course. So this is the opposite scenario. Test course display section that have published lessons. So some lessons may be published or not. And then scenario by scenario, we're basically testing that the page is loading well, getting the route of the course and asserting the right data and asserting the status 200. So I want to emphasize that automated testing along the way helped a lot to discover bugs, to even think about the scenarios that are possible. Like for example, some lesson is published, but the course isn't published or vice versa, or who has access to what, like premium member or admin or simple user or guest. And it is all covered by tests whenever possible. And now when we launch new features or bugs, the automated tests launching on the testing server help a lot to make sure that we don't break anything along the way. And finally, let's quickly run through the tools used for the website and why. If you have any more questions about technical details, shoot in the comments below and I will answer them. In terms of tools, I've posted a tweet recently in public with the links. So we've used Laravel Spark for subscription management. So if you register on laraveldaily.com, this is Laravel form, but then inside you are immediately redirected to the dashboard of Laravel Spark to choose your membership if you want to get premium. So this is Laravel Spark kind of included into our own header and footer of Laravel Daily. This is a huge time saver to not build your own SaaS. And I do recommend Laravel Spark a lot. It has its downside, it has its limitations, but it works kind of like a separate admin panel for your subscriptions. It works with Stripe or Paddle. In our case, I've chosen Paddle because I like the way it works. It kind of takes care of all the payments and once per month, it pays out my money instead of me working with every transaction, with every invoice with Stripe individually. 
So Laravel Spark with Paddle. Next on the list is Algolia. Algolia is powering the search, and I do emphasize the search in Laravel Daily Com a lot. This will be my focus for upcoming months to improve the search results. So basically anywhere on the page, you can click Command K or Control K and search for, for example, Livewire, hit enter, and then Algolia is powering the search by text. It has all the data like courses, videos, packages, code examples, and others related to Livewire, for example, and performs the search. This is how it looks internally. So 3000 searches per first days. Wow. Okay. That is pretty big number. And these are the records. So lesson, post, video, package, courses, and stuff like that. If we go to posts, each model has title and other attributes and you can browse them here, search through them, and it is all powered by Laravel Scout internally in Laravel, just exported to Algolia. There are other Laravel Scout drivers, some of them are free, Algolia is not free, but I worked with Algolia in the past and I'm really happy with that. I didn't need to configure any server of my own. If I had chosen something like Elasticsearch or MeleeSearch, I had to do some manual work on my own server, I prefer to offload it to professionals. I'm not affiliated with Algolia or any other paid tools mentioned in this video. I just prefer those. Next on the list is Vimeo.com, which I've mentioned already in the part one of this video yesterday. So I wouldn't even stop on that. I just use Vimeo API to embed the videos by their IDs. Nothing really fancy there. Then for the comments, for example, on the post, there's a comment section. So you can leave a reply, you can add a comment, and this is for this is powered by laravelcomments.com, created by well-known guys from Spotty. It's not a free tool, but again, it would take time for me or my teammates to create a similar form, similar experience. Instead, why reinvent the wheel? Instead, we can use a ready-made tool, which is quite cheap if you compare that to the amount of work, the hours to be spent to create that manually. So it was also a no-brainer. Works well. I didn't find any bugs or inconveniences so far. Really recommend that one. And finally, for the deployment, I used Laravel Forge and Envoyer, both official products by Laravel team and Taylor. Under the hood, the droplet is on DigitalOcean, the main droplet. So again, nothing really fancy here. For both Forge and Envoyer, there are alternatives, there are free alternatives, but I'm just using the same tools I've been using for years with Laravel, also supporting the Taylor and Laravel team. So it's a no-brainer for me. Forge is for creating a new droplet, a new server, configure the scheduler, the ENV file, the first deployment script, SSL certificate, and stuff like that. It especially pays off if you have multiple projects created and multiple clients. So for the same monthly membership, you can create multiple droplets, multiple sites there. And Envoyer was added a bit later for zero downtime deployment. So instead of just waiting for the deployment to happen in like 10 to 15 seconds, and during that time the website is down, Envoyer takes care of that to have a separate kind of deployment space where the deployment happens, and then the symlink works and switches the live area to the one that is already deployed. With that approach, there's zero downtime for your users and the website is always up and running. Again, it's an optional thing, it's a paid thing, not a free thing, and there are alternatives, but I'm using the tool that I'm used to. So yeah, these are the things I wanted to tell about the new Laravel Daily Com, both from project management point of view yesterday and technical side today. If you have any questions or specific areas that I want to maybe not talk about, but you want me to talk about that, shoot in the comments below. And of course, support the new LaravelDaily.com by subscribing to yearly or monthly membership to get all the courses. And of course, I will be adding new ones here. The current one that I'm working on is about Laravel structure, how to structure Laravel code, Laravel project. Then you will have access to premium articles. The latest one is on FilePond, which is a huge article, 23 minutes long to read. Another premium one is about inertia roles and permissions with Breeze and Jetstream. So subscribe to LaravelDaily.com. This will be my home for upcoming years, hopefully. And that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.